Okay, so I felt like coming outside for this one. Um, just a really nice day today, so. Uh, you will hear some birds and bees, maybe, buzzing by. All right. So it's interesting that we we're talking about water because I think over to that side of me, you'll see a rain barrel um, that we collect water to... Um, I have a few wearing barrels actually now that I'm out here so you can see this little kind of container garden here and the, there's a rain barrel in the background there too and rain barrels collect the water from the gutters and they really help you know the, the plants tend to do better on rainwater than they do on on uh, other types of just, just watering from the hose all right so Today we're gonna to cover the elements of life, and this one will be much shorter, I'm gonna to try to anyways, um, than the one that we had from the other day. There's a little spider here, a little jumper, it's being shy. Um, and but this is in um, book section, um, chapter 2.1, and um, I'm gonna really just focus on the, the major elements that make up the macromolecules of our cells for now. Um, I'm not, I think there's another section that goes into trace elements and things like that, but you're already pretty familiar with those. So I just want to review the um, things that have to do with the macromolecules that are and where they come from um, as far as um, the different cycles. Okay, so we're going to look at macromolecules, um, how organisms exchange matter with um, their environment. Um, and focus on, um, I believe, we're going to focus on carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus today. All right, so when you think of the macromolecules, the things that make up our living, uh, the, the, chemical components of living things. Um, take a second to think about that. If you want to pause here, that would be a good spot. There's really just four major macromolecules that are essential for, for living, that, that really kind of encompass what living things are made of. Um, so again, pause and try to see if you can type them out or, or write them out. Think about what you think that the four major, ma remember macro means big, so macromolecules in living organisms. All right, so um, let me start with, I'm just going to do a lot of images here today, I think. So just going to Google image, search something up here. And I'm going to just search for our trusty glucose here. All right, this will do. And I'm gonna, you don't have to, you, but that's the nice thing about Cami is you can easily do that if you want to, or you can draw it, whatever you wanna do. You don't have to for this one. Um, but let's look at this here. So remember that the formula for glucose, I'm just gonna do a text box, I don't have to write it, is going to be C6, I know there's a way of doing subscripts. Yep, there we go. C6. H12. O6. So. That's it for for a lot of carbohydrates. So this the, this group of um, element or not elements, macromolecules are called Think about it. So if we were to reduce this, we would end up with CH2O. And I'm going to just subscript that. So that gives us what the name, I gave it away already, didn't mean to do that, but the name of what this group of compounds, macromolecules, is called. These are called the carbohydrates. And they're major um, components are going to be, again, just the carbon, hydrogen, 
carbon and water basically carbon hydrogen oxygen there's some variations where you can add things to them but for the most part we have um, they're going to have carbon hydrogen and oxygen in them carbohydrates um, we're going to talk much more about them in um, subsequent sections here so that's pretty much all I'm going to say for now about the carbohydrates again we're going to get into much more um, all right so next group that I want to talk about are also going to have very similar um, building blocks but the way that they're put together is going to be different and let me just search again I like this kind of searching on the fly here for a lipid uh, I'm probably not going to get what I want from this um, let me search for something different here yeah I like this better this looks good and pop that guy in there again you don't have to write that down but or use that one but these are going to be lipids and lipids are going to be let's say they're they're, they're nonpolar and if we look at the chemical components they are going to be mostly made up of hydrogen and carbon so they're a lot of times called hydrocarbons sometimes really long chains Nonpolar, so that means they're not going to dissolve in water. They're going to be like a barrier. And so you can see that they're made up of lots of carbon and oxygen and hydrogen. A lot like carbohydrates, but just a very, very different arrangement. Um, glucose is going to be a polar molecule. It's going to dissolve in, in water. Um, and lipids do not dissolve in water, nonpolar. All right, um, next one here, let me see what I want to get for this image. I'm going to get um, protein. And you guys know what the building blocks of protein are, right? So I'm going to search for that. I'm going to search for the building block of protein is an amino acid. And let me see what I get for amino acid. I like this picture. Remember, this is not a protein here, but this is the building blocks of protein. And that, we can see a few different elements in it. And these are, um, um, the group of macromolecules are called proteins. They're long chains of uh, amino acids that are linked together by peptide bonds. So, and we're going to go into, again, much more about their structure in a different video. But um, their major components, so we're going back to here, hydrocarbons, yeah, just basically hydrogen carbon and oxygen. Uh, but for proteins, you notice we have something added here. We have carbon and hydrogen still, so that's important. So C, H, O, so still have those components, but also nitrogen. And then in the R group, remember there's 20 different, 20 different amino acids, um, R chains or side chains that all have different chemical components to them. So some of those do have other elements in there like sulfur, um, but um, their major, the amino acids major component would be the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Okay, and then lastly, we have the nucleic acid. So let me just image search up nucleic acid. Yeah, let me see if I can find what I want that this is going to give me here. Yeah, I like this one. It's okay if it spills over. I'm going to keep it spilled over for now. So we can see that the nucleic acids have Are going to have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and then in addition here you see the phosphorus too. So a, a lot of uh, of the major elements of life, if you remember from 
um, just to talk about the elements that are like make up 96%. Remember we said C-H-N-O-P-S, oops, schnapps. Um, so nucleic acid is going to have all but the sulfur and it, that should kind of start to ring a bell from when you learned about nucleic acids and Hershey Chase, all that stuff. And then um, protein is going to have all but the phosphorus in it. Um, it, it you don't see the sulfur because it, there's some protein or some amino acid side chains that have sulfur in them. All right. So we have um, sugar, phosphate, sugar, sugar, phosphate, base, and repeating. So, uh, and the, we have the nitrogenous base, the sugar. So in this case, this sugar is deoxyribose, phosphate, backbone, sh sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, backbone, and then the in between, remember this is just one side of the nucleic acid chain, um, and this one is deoxyribose. Um, you have, and I could tell this is DNA because it has the, the T in it, um, and these are your nitrogenous bases. We'll go into m more detail about, remember, our purines and pyrimidines, but for now we're just focusing on those elements that are in there. All right, so let's now talk a little bit about the different cycles of like where these things come from. I don't, I don't think that's something we usually have focused on before. Um, in um, ninth grade biology necessarily, but you probably might even remember these from younger grades. Um, let's start with the one element that's in all of these, carbon, um, and how carbon cycles throughout our environment. All right, so we can, these are cycles, so we can really start anywhere. So let's talk about um, trees, okay? Trees take out carbon dioxide from the environment. That's why one reason why trees are good, because if you have too much carbon dioxide, then you get a greenhouse effect, and that's kind of what people, are, when they talk about global warming, that's what they're referring to. Um, so that's one reason why trees are good, but trees are going to take out carbon dioxide, and then let's say the tree dies and then it's going to return that carbon back to the soil um, and then some organisms are going to help decompose that um, that can end up into the in the water which is you know not not a good thing or necessarily a bad thing sediments they can get pushed up so this is all part of a cycle um, also respiration so we produce carbon dioxide so one of the biggest contributors to carbon dioxide in our environment um, are things like, well, animals, but, you know, specifically if you have a lot of cattle and things like that, they create carbon dioxide that ends up in the, in the atmosphere. So we are going to take in oxygen and we are going to breathe out carbon dioxide and that ends up in the atmosphere. Also, remember emissions, um, so things like burning fossil fuels, car emissions, all sorts of things, that carbon dioxide ends up in the environment. But trees and things can pull that out and use that to create their, their biomass, you know, through photosynthesis. Same thing with the marine uh, organisms. They can photosynthesize, and you have marine res respiration that is going to... Um, going to, that should be, is that marine respiration? It's going to create carbon dioxide. Marine photosynthesis, photosynthesis. I wonder if they got these opposite. Okay. All right. So that's the carbon cycle. Let's focus on now the nitrogen cycle. Okay. Nitrogen is very interesting. Um, we have a lot of nitrogen in our atmosphere, but it's N2 bound up as N2. So N, triple bond, N. And that is going to be not useful to the vast majority of organisms on the planet. They cannot use nitrogen in that, in that uh, fashion. We need nitrogen for our proteins, for our DNA. Very, very important, obviously. Um, but we need to rely on some things that can do something called fixed nitrogen. Um, and that is mostly the job of 
bacteria that live in the soil, that live in the nodules. There's several different types of these nitrogen fixing bacteria. Um, but what they do is they make the, they do something called nitrogen fixation. So they make the nitrogen available to living organisms. So then they can use those into their, um, in their proteins and their um, nucleic acids. So what's really interesting is it'll take, and I in the classroom do a little bit with the nitrogen cycle because I have a fish tank that grows plants. So we focus on it because if we get too much of one of these, then we don't get the other one produced and then we don't get plant uh, fertilizer or plant growth. Um, so we need to have a good environment that produces lots of this good bacteria that can help fix nitrogen for our um, ecosystem. All right, so what happens first is those nitrogen fixing bacteria, they're gonna use atmospheric nitrogen um, nitrogen in the soil, and they are going to convert that in N2 into ammonia, which is NH4, okay? Um, I'm sorry, like uh, uh, NH3, so ammonium, ammonia. Um, and then they are going to another type of bacteria is then going to take that ammonium ammonia and then convert it into nitrite which is no2 and then an, another type of bacteria is then going to convert the nitrite into nitrate and what nitrate is is fertilizer okay so if you think of fertilizer for plants it's it's nitrate and that's what happens in the soil is you have, again, you have the nitrogen fixing bacteria, they're gonna produce ammonium, ammonium, and then it's going to, other bacteria are gonna then convert that ammonia into um, nitrite and then into nitrate. So, um, um, like if we think of fish, if this is happening into um, a, in a aquatic environment, ammonia is toxic to fish. So that is, going to be converted into these nitrite, which is much less toxic, and then nitrate, which is good for plants, is gonna be how they are able to grow and then assimilate, meaning put that nitrogen into their cells in the form of um, proteins and nucleic acids. So that's the nitrogen cycle, very cool. Um, and then, you, let me do phosphate. Um, So, you know, phosphate is just a little bit simpler um, in that you have plants that are going to um, decompose and they're going to, um, that phosphate will be turned over into the soil, plants take it up, um, also important for plant growth, and it can end up in, from the soil into the, the water. Um, and, you know, if you have too much phosphate, um, that could cause problems too. It can cause things like algal blooms that could eventually result in your um, ecosystem being disturbed because you have too many. Oh, I, gotta, I do have to talk this quick because I only have like 5% or 7%. Um, and that can cause too much phosphate can cause too much um, algae. Then the algae start to decompose then they start to use up all the oxygen. Um, but essentially, it's phosphate is going to be taken up in the soil by, by plants. It'll be put back into the soil by, as um, animals decompose, and that's how the, the phosphorus cycle works. Um, again, phosphorus is gonna be really important for um, nucleic acids. All right, and then lastly, the water cycle, which we're all very familiar with. Um, I'm just going to really kind of focus on um, one of these here. Uh, we're going to talk in AP Biology a lot this year about transpiration. That's the movement of water in plants, and then eventually that, that's going to leave the stomata of the plant and going to end up in the atmosphere, and it can come back down as precipitation, goes into the, in the water, into the soil, and then the, the rivers, the streams, ponds, it can evaporate. That's you guys all familiar with the, with the water cycle, so I don't need to harp on that too much. All right, um, and then this is pretty much just what I just did here. I included these um, 
figures. So I guess you didn't really need to do the, them on the cami, but just showing that how all of these have carbon in them. This is going to be carbohydrates, lipids. Um, this is NH2C with a side chain, and this is uh, an amino acid, the carboxyl group here, uh, carboxylic acid. So that's why this is called an amino acid. There's the amino N, and here's the carboxyl end amino acid, and then this is showing a phosphate sugar deoxyribose, de deoxyribonucleotide, and I don't know if this is, because I don't, uh, I know that this is either, so I'm going to use my process, it's going to be a um, purine, so this is either A or G, I don't know which one, so, so those are the, the, the basic the, um, components, all of them have carbon, um, all of them have oxygen, um, both of these are just hydrogen and carbon and oxygen, and then we have nitrogen in both the um, amino acids and the nitri um, nitrogenous bases or the nucleic acids, and then there's also phosphorus in the nucleic acids. So that was uh, just a very brief overview of the major chemical um, elements that are present in the macromolecules of our, um, in our body and our cells. So I hope that you have a good day, and that is that.